Hello guys, hope you have been having a very lovely day. In this video, we'll see how to uh, reduce the signal flow graph and find out the transfer function TFS by RFS using the Mason scan formula. So before we start off, I would like to tell that uh, basically five steps are involved in this reduction. Before I write down the five steps which are involved in the calculation of the transfer function, I would like to tell you what the Mason scan formula is. It is the T, which is the transfer function, is C of S by R of S, which is equal to 1 by delta, sigma K, PK, and delta K. So this is the Mason's gain formula. And the five steps which we are going to follow are the nothing but calculating the individual terms of this expression. So now uh, let us do the steps one by one. Step one is calculating forward path gains. Now what is the forward path? Now uh, if you look at our question there is a forward path from 1 to 7 that is from if you're taking this point the only way you can get to 7 is one forward path for example if there was a forward arrow at this place or at this place we could have gone like this and then like this and then like this which means they would have been they would have been two forward paths but in this question we only have one forward path so that is what I mean by forward path gain. Now individual loop gain is our second step. Step two is individual loop gain. As you can already guess, individual loop gain is nothing but the number of loops present in this and the gain of each loop separately. So in our question, we have three individual loops. And the third step is gain products of two non-touching loops. And step four is calculating delta and delta k. As you can see, this is delta and delta k. And delta k is delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, and so on, uh, depending upon the number of loops, loops and stuff. And step 5 is our final step, um, which is calculation of the transfer function using the Mason's gain formula. So these are the five steps which we are going to use in um, uh, solving the signal flow graph. The first step is calculating the forward path gains, the number of forward paths and the gain of each forward path. And the second step is to identify how many individual loops are there in the signal flow graph and calculating the gains of each individual loop. And step three is to find out how many non-touching loops, how many non-touching loops are there, writing them down and calcul and um, finding out the products of the gains of the two non-touching loops. How many pairs are there? Those many gain products. The step four is calculation of delta and delta k. That is, it, it, delta k can be anything. It can be delta one or delta two. It can be any number. Sometimes we might have up to delta five. Sometimes we might, we might be having only up to delta one. And step five is one is um, we have all the terms we need and then putting them all together we get the transfer function so now let's get to some work okay in this question now uh, let me just write down the gains and all uh, this is um, so I have written the gains of each part 1 g1 g2 g3 g4 and 1 again and the negative parts have minus h2 minus h1 and minus 1 so as you all know let's get to work step one calculating the forward gains 
So in this sum, in this signal flow graph, there is only one forward path from 1 to 7. So the only forward path which we have here is this. This is the only forward path. In some cases, we'll have two forward paths, and in some cases, we might have three forward paths, and so on. So now, the gain of the forward path, which is what we actually want to find out, gain of this forward path is 1 into g1, g2, g3, g4 into 1. So I'm going to write this as p1. Remember these terms. p1 is g1, g2, g3, and g4. So for forward parts, you're going to denote it with p1, p2, p3, and so on. So when you know, when you see that uh, only one uh, uh, sub, um, what do you call this, a subscript, when there is only one subscript uh, to this letter, it means it is the gain of a forward part. So now step two is finding out the number of individual loops. So let's do step two here. So how many individual loops do we find here? This is one individual loop, that is g2, g3 and minus h2. So minus h2, g2 and g3. This is one individual loop and the other individual loops are uh, 4 uh, to 6 and 4 again. And the values for that are minus H1, uh, G3 and G4. G3, G4 and minus H1. And the third individual loop we have is 2 to 6 and there again. So that is G1, G2, G3, G4. Uh, okay. G1, G2, G3, G4 and it goes back. This is minus 1. Okay, so now we want to find out the gains of the individual loops. So now, as I already told you to remember, when there is only one uh, uh, subscript here, just know that it is a forward gain. Now, when there are two subscripts, and that two in a pattern like this, uh, Okay, uh, you'll, know the deno um, you'll know the way they're denoted uh, as you practice more and more problems. Uh, I follow this uh, denoting. So the gain of this loop, I'm denoting it with P11, which is equal to minus G2, G3, H2. And the gain of this loop, I'm denoting it with P11. 1 sorry p2 1 so this number changes and then that is equal to g3 g4 minus h1 so i'm gonna write it as minus h1 g3 and g4 i hope you got that now this one which i'm gonna denote it with p3 1 that is going to be uh this is minus one so the the gain is going to be minus g1 g2 g3 and g4 so now we have the um, product of uh, we have the gains of each individual loop we have so the next thing is the product of the gains of two non-touching loops now that is step three now i want you to take a closer look at this signal graph do you find any loop that is non-touching Consider, consider the loop 2, 6 and back to 2 again and consider this loop. So if you consider this big loop and the small loop, it is 
touch, they are both touching each other at this G2, G3 and this loop at G3, G4 and these two loops are also touching each other at G3. So, uh, in our signal graph, in this question, there is no pair of known touching loops. So, step 3 is sort of uh, invalid in this case. So, I am just going to write it as no non-touching loops. So, that eliminates a, a lot of work. I'll definitely solve more problems in which there are a few non-touching loops, so you'll get a more uh, picture on the subject. Now, step four, as we all know, is calculating the values of delta and delta k. Now, how do we do that? Step four. Now, uh, step four is to calculate the values of delta and delta k. In our case, uh, it is delta 1. So, the value of delta is very easy. It is 1 minus the sum of all the uh, gains of individual loops which you have calculated. That is um, P11, uh, that is minus P11 plus P21 plus P31. So, uh, delta is 1 minus the sums of uh, the gains of the individual loops plus, plus the uh, sums of, of the uh, gains of the um, uh, products of the gains of the non-touching loops. And in our case, we don't have any non-touching loops. So, if you want, you can write a simple plus 0 or you can just leave it anyway. It won't make any difference. So, calculating delta is, uh, delta is equal to 1, uh, 1 minus, my bad, 1 minus P11 is minus G2, G3, H2. And P21 is minus H1, G3, G4, minus H1, G3, G4. And P31 is minus G1, G2, G3, G4 is minus g1 g2 g3 g4 so this is equal to 1 plus g2 g3 h2 plus h1 g3 g4 plus g1 g2 g3 g4 so delta is equal to this value so delta is in any sum is equal to 1 minus the sum of the gains of the individual loops plus the sums of the um, um, products of the gains of the two non-touching loop pairs. And in this sum, we don't have any non-touching loops, so we don't have to worry about it. And in the same way, we, can, we needn't even worry about delta k, that is delta 1, because if we don't have any non-touching loops. So, no part in this is uh, non-touching with the forward path. We have just one forward path and no part is non-touching with it. See, um, do you find any part which um, is, for example, uh, you need to have a better idea of what exactly this non-touching is. For example, the forward path is this. Is there any part which does not um, overlap with the forward path. That is exactly what non-